This video was made possible with the help of Game Toppers. Upgrade your gaming experience with a Game Topper. Greenville 1989 will probably come around with the expression of a co-op Dixit, which I kind of disagree with. If this is a storytelling game for people that like to roleplay or use their imagination, and it's co-op. The story of Greenville is basically players are teenagers living in 1989 in this little quaint town when all of a sudden another dimension opens up and transforms everything. Now the kids had planned their usual Friday night down the bowling alley when all chaos goes wrong and so basically all players are trying to get to the bowling alley as previously arranged uh, while trying to survive Cthulhu-esque and lots of nasty creatures crawling out of the woodwork. Now one of the first things that's going to blow you away is the impressive artwork which is on the cards. These cards have these really impressionable kind of pop culture-y uh, images of Cthulhu Lovecraftian artwork with, mixed with pop culture references as well as horror film references. And it'll be up to the players to put their own spin on this art to tell their story of where they are and where they're going to. Basically in the game every player is going to start with one card in front of them and then one player will be designated the guide. They will be quiet as player by player they will recount their story of what is on the card, where they are, their location and what's going on and what they're fearing or what they're feeling and what they plan to do eventually um, as soon as they can move on. Once all the players have told their story of what they, what's on their card and where they are and all that stuff, it's up to the guy to then draw a number of cards, depending on the number of players, plus one. So there's always two dummy cards in play. And then they're going to be continuing the story of each of the players. Well, when I say continuing, they're going to be choosing one card, which is going to be the next part of the story for this player, the next part of the story for that player, etc, etc. And they're going to be doing this in secret. They'll place some tokens on these cards and they'll place these cards out on the table. Then it goes back to the other players who will then communicate and try and discuss what they think is the location that they're going to go to next. And it's kind of a telepathy kind of, not really telepathy, but more of a, you know, I've given you hints at what I want to do with my story. Have you guided me to the right place? And that's when all players will then choose which card they think is theirs. Again, yeah, it's similar to Dixit, but it's not. Once players have chosen, all tokens are revealed so everyone can see who has progressed and who is actually stuck. So if you've guessed the right card, you get to keep that card and that's the next part of your story. If you muck up, you get a bit lost. You'll have to move your character piece along one of the dimensional tracks. If you ever get to the end space, you fall off and everybody loses. The good thing is, Along the way you can choose which route you want to take and if you ever encounter an object you get to keep that object and that object is kind of like a help, a little bonus for you if the players seem to be stuck. Then the next player to the left of the guide becomes the guide and you carry on. If you have a new image you tell 
the progressing story of why you're here now and where you want to go and what you're thinking and etc etc if you're still stuck with the previous card you're going to need to elaborate a bit more and put a bit more depth into your storytelling to hopefully this new guide will guide you to the next card. Once all players at the table have four cards in front of them, the game is won. But as I said, if one player slips off through one of the portals, it's game over for everybody. This is a fantastic and quick playing, a role playing game that puts you into horror films, basically from the 80s of a sort. The more imagination you have, the more fun you'll probably have and win easily. But some players may struggle and be stuck in the same location and they may get a bit frustrated by having to recount the same story over and over again and it's this time they need to kind of look for the opportunity to try and lead the story the way that they want to and hopefully give enough clues that when the guide draws a card they will instantly put two and two together and choose the, the right card for them. Now sometimes it can be quite easy to find out what is the next card for a player because there may be a, like a visual clue. It might be a case of the player is currently in a room full of balloons and one of the cards that was drawn by the guide is actually has some balloons in it. So there's a, like a, a visual continuation. But then again, it might be down to the storytelling to actually guide the players. It might be a word or an emotion which will kind of link two images together so the guide will go okay that's for player b and then player b actually does choose that because that was what they were thinking now if anyone's seen horror films i'm sure that they can see some references or if they've even heard of cthulhu they will notice things which would they go okay yeah i know what that is and then they can integrate that into their story giving easy clues which will lead other players on and maybe be amusing and make people laugh at the same time. So apart from the artwork on the cards, there's the whole overall aesthetic on the table, which is okay, I suppose, with the tokens um, and the, the, the little board. It looks okay. It serves no reference because most of the game is in the mind of the players and it's just there to keep track of who is the closest from falling off into another dimension. And this game will probably work better with four or maybe five players where we played a three player game. It was fun. I enjoyed it, but it was limited because the choices were smaller. Having more cards um, drawn by the guide would make it a little bit more interesting and to hear other stories going on as players are trying to get to that bowling alley in a hurry without stepping into zones where they're walking around in circles. Now this is a fantastic game for those of you who wish to explore your imagination and uh, as I said, reference pop culture icons like Freddy or Jason or even Chucky um, and Simon. Look out for Simon, he's dangerous. As each individual card has a lot of astounding detail within it, as you can see. One worry I have is after you've played the game many times that the cards will become familiar and you'll start repeating the same kind of history, much like you do when you play Dixit. But that's a long way off yet. I need to play it some more and I want to play it some more. This is a fantastic imaginary storytelling game and it's very quick playing. You will probably knock this out in around about a half an hour with a handful of friends. Although this game is not going to be for everybody and it's not going to be for the young who may not know what Jason and Freddy are. But again, it won't be for the young because their imaginations might not be as livid or, um, or, or open. And maybe it's about seeing parallels. And I think that the theme of the 80s horror films is a good way for people to, you know, kind of connect on a thinky logical level where the game will then flow naturally so there you go that's my first impressions of greenville 1989 have you played it what do you think about it did you find this video informative did it point you in the direction to look out for this game or is this a video which you might want to share with a friend because 
they might be interested in this game. If they do, then share this video. If you've liked this video, like this video. And if you want to check out everything else that I've been up to in the board game world, you can go to boardgameseverybodyshould.com and check out all the reviews that have been put up there. You can check out all the board game music I've created, as well as the Berkey and Badger Board Game Babble podcast, which is a live podcast. Go and check that out. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll be back. Just sitting at the table next to Felicia would be quite nice. Wouldn't it be good? I got some more games.